uh, 28 souls got saved. So praise God. You know, we're, we're, we're doing stuff for Jesus. It may not be so much here that we see the results, but we're going to see results as God leads. And I believe God's going to add to this body. I believe that God's going to begin to touch people's hearts and lives. Amen? So we're so thankful uh, tonight to have my, uh, my uh, I call him my son because we kind of adopted him into our family. Uh, he's lived with us for several years, and he, uh, he's an uh, aviation mechanic. He works on the big 747s, the 777s, and he repairs them. He's out in St. Louis right now. But God has put on his heart to move back here, and, and so uh, he wants to work with his dad, and I think that's a great thing. And uh, he's just looking for a job, so pray that God will open up a, a job here for him in the aviation department in the area, Connecticut, you know, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island area, um, even, even New York area wouldn't be too far, uh, but uh, closer to home. And he said, I'll travel, Dad. I'll come down for the weekends and be a part of the fellowship and stuff. So, so keep that in prayer. So I asked him, I said, why don't you share tonight? You know, people, we haven't heard from him in a couple of years. And, and uh, uh, everywhere, where, everywhere he goes, he shows people my, our pictures. He said, look, this is my mom and my dad, because his mom and dad are no longer living in, you know, in Nigeria. And he goes, this is my mom and dad. And when they see we're white, they kind of flip out. They don't, can't, can't quite figure that out. And uh, I noticed today when we were having dinner, uh, you know, I said, uh, hi, come over here, son. And the the table next to us, the guy kind of looked up like this <laughs> at us. But I don't mind, you know, and uh, I just love Sam, and we all love you, Sam. And so we want you to come and share what God puts on your heart tonight. Come on and be with us. Amen. Bring your Bible. Get your Bible. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know I preach. I don't normally use uh, the whole verses from the Bible. I just take one passage from the Bible, but I'm going to, I'm not preaching, I'm not teaching, but I just want to tell you some experience I've got through my parents, my father, my mother, you know. God bless you in Jesus' name. I love you, dad. I love you, mom. I love you. I love everybody. I love everybody. Dad, is my Jesus love you. I say, smile, Jesus love you. Hallelujah. Smile, Jesus love you. I say, smile, Jesus love you. Hallelujah. Mommy, smile, Jesus love you. I say, smile, Jesus love you. Alleluia. Grandma, smile, Jesus love you. I say, smile, Jesus love you. Hallelujah. Sister, smile, Jesus love you. I say, smile, Jesus love you. Alleluia. Brother, smile, Jesus love you. I say, smile, Jesus love you. Alleluia. Sister, smile, Jesus love you. I say, my Jesus love you. And sister, my Jesus love you. I say, my Jesus love you. And Brady, my Jesus love you. Come on, Brady, my Jesus love you. Bobby, my Jesus love you. Brother, my Jesus love you. Hallelujah. You know, I just to sing. I sing that song every day because um, it's not a song, but it's just something came to my spirit. I sing every time. I give God the glory. I'm happy to be here. We are, we are Christians, but uh, you have to know one thing. Every Christian, every cars we have, every house we have, anything medical we have, we need to have what is called insurance, right? We have insurance in our car. We have insurance in our home. We have insurance. In most of the things we do, we have insurance. Even companies have insurance in case of fire or anything. But we all know that tomorrow is not a promise to anybody. We remember Sept September 11. What happened? They never know that building was going to collapse. It is not a promise to tomorrow. Is not a promise to anybody. I booked my ticket November. As soon as I booked my ticket November, coming home, you know what I did? Every day, I pick up phone. I sometimes text my mom, "Mommy, I got 26 more days." Daddy, I got 23 more days. I keep testing them. As the day is going, I test. As the day is going, I test. Mommy, I have 20 days. I was testing all of a sudden. Last week, Tuesday. Something, so two weeks ago. Two weeks before that, last week, Tuesday, I fall seriously sick. Seriously. 
I couldn't even get up from the bed. I was coughing. I was throwing up. I was just pain all over me. It's just, I was so, I was so sick. I said, God, why? This is the time I want to go and see my parents. Now I'm sick. So I called my neighbor. The neighbor bought me some drugs. You no, know, I treated myself. Everything went fine. The following week again, I was okay. But I went to work two days. The following week again, which is last week Tuesday, we were less busy. They say if he wants to go home, just go home. But on Monday, I didn't go to work. Tuesday, I said, let me just rest. Decide I'm traveling, so I don't need to go to work. Because last week, I was having four days off. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I was supposed to work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So on Tuesday, I was just home. I would go around, go to shopping. Around 10, I came back home. I was not feeling pain in my stomach, serious pain. I thought it was maybe I have an infection in my stomach or diarrhea. I went and bought um, a pepton for stomach pain. I drink it. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was just out of the point, out of the way. I said, maybe it will go down. No way. After about six, seven minutes, I drink that pepton. I rushed to the bathroom. I started throwing up. Vomiting, throwing up, vomiting, throwing up. I was going down. My power was going down. The pain was so severe that I could not even stand. I can't even sit. I can't even lay down. I don't just know what. I was just crying, rolling on the floor, then rolling. I managed to know where my phone is. I said, God, I'm going to die. I was just thinking, this is, I just have a week to travel to my, just a few days to my parents' place. Why this? I, don't, I was so confused. But the pain in me, I, I can't even see somebody. But I managed to grab my phone on Tuesday around 11, and I died in 911. I could barely give them my address. So they came. My neighbor had to go and open the door. Then they came into my room. Stand up. I couldn't stand. Sit. I couldn't sit. Not, the pain was just too much. Then they did me in the medical, put something on my Make sure they, you know, I'm so scared of short injection. I don't like to say it. But I don't, because of the pain, I didn't know when they hit my hand with, they pierced my hand with needle, put that drip on me, put everything on me. I was out of, I was just almost passing out. Vomiting, throwing up, vomiting, crying. I don't know where I was. I didn't even know when I get to the hospital. And now I was dirty around the level in the night. So later they said it's coming. They did everything. The result was that uh, I have a kidney stone. He said, but your kidney stone is so small. You're going, you're going to pass it out. He said, we we'll give, we'll give you three of those uh, medication. They, they gave me three medication. One, two, three. They said those two are for pain. The other one is for you not to drop again. The other one is just for, me, for just to open my bladder so that I can urinate or pass it out. I said, okay. Then I went home that night. My neighbor, his name is Marcos, very nice guy. He took me home. The next day, he went to go and help me to body drug. I was just home. I wasn't feeling fine. I think on Thursday of it, the symptoms were still there. I was just thinking of, I bought my ticket already. Why? Why now I'm sick? But I want to go and see my parents. You know, that thing was just in my heart because I just want to come and spend the Christmas and New Year here. So the my friend bought me the medication. I drink, but my body was not stable. I wasn't stable. Um, was it Friday or Thursday that you called me? He said, how are you doing, son? How is everything? I, I said, fine, fine. He said, you are not fine. I said, daddy, I won't lie to you. I'm not fine. <laughs> I said, I'm not fine. He said, I know. I know. Somebody tell me you are not fine. I said, really, I'm not really fine, dad. I'm seriously sick. He said, what's, what's wrong? I said, I was having... Uh, I got kidney stone. He said, really? I said, yeah. I said, but I will try to be here because I don't just want to be Because this week, the next week, is just going to be all my weekdays off. Instead of staying in St. Louis, it's just by myself. Nobody come there. I don't talk to nobody. I will feel more depressed, more confused, even if I'm taking the medication. I still feel depressed. I need to talk to someone. I need to see my parents. I just want to see my parents, you know. So I took the medication, everything was getting a little bit. So somebody introduced me, said, go and take this uh, apple cider vinegar. So I went to the store, I bought it, I drink it that evening. 
the pain, it kind of, it was a kind of relief. So I took it, I was taking it, taking it, drinking it, drinking a lot of water, a lot of water. Then everything was going down. But still, till that Monday, was it? I came on Monday a bit? Sunday. Or Sunday, I came on Sunday. But the pain was still there. I was thinking, how do I sit inside the airplane? How do I? It's going to be very, very painful. So that Sunday, I took uh, my medication, the pain killers they gave to me. I took one before I left the, um, I left St. Louis. Inside the airplane, I was just sleep, sleeping like a dead dog. So, <laughs> so I get to Chicago, uh, Chicago. We took another flight. When I get there, I bought water, drink the other medication, the other, I drink it, it was two. One smaller one, bigger one. Then I took the big one. Oh, inside the airplane, they put me at the back, back seat, the last seat at the back. The plane was filled up. But I was at the back. I sat at the middle of the airplane. Then the guy sitting beside me, we were talking. All of a sudden, I fall asleep. I was now snoring. Oh, oh. So the guy with son, may, may you are sleeping. I said, okay, okay, okay. Till when I get to Boston, I fall asleep. Till when I get to Boston, I hear the trust reversal noise. It was the trust reversal noise. That is the one that the airplane used to pull the brake back. The brake cannot hold the airplane. It is the thrust reverser, the spoilers, the, the leading edge and the trailing edge, the slat, the others, others so those are the ones that hold the airplane, not the brake. The brake just apply. The brake cannot hold the airplane. Okay? So the thrust reverser noise, those noise you hear when the airplane land, you hear, boom, so that's the one. I, I said, we are in Boston. I was so happy. But still, the pain was still keep coming. Uh, then I said, I'm happy I'm at home. As soon as I get to Boston, I took the silver line, taking me to South station get to south station i said when is the bus going to new bedford he said two o'clock and i was at the south station 147 i said ah, give me the ticket give me the ticket. i just bought the ticket take a bus to new new bedford yeah i sure i was so happy i was so happy i just daddy i love you dad i love you mom god bless you please let me give you a little testimony about my life you know 2006 i met my parents i came to new england uh from a um, where was it from? From Michigan. Back to New England. I was having issue with my paperwork, which everything is okay with me, my paperwork. I came back. Uh, the church I used to go, there was no place. I got a job here, but nobody could provide me a house in, uh, in Providence. I just came. Nobody. Nobody. So I was thinking, how do I get a house? Where do I stay? I think Mr. Defemi called you, right? He said, we have somebody who have a job in New Bedford. Already, I know my parents, but I was not close to them because the time I used to hold this uh, Pentecostal fire something. A Pentecostal fire. I was the one doing the recording. I was coming Pastor Chris. Even before then, we come to, we come to my parents' house. We have prayers every Monday. That's how we started the prayer, uh, Monday prayer in his house. That was 2000. 9, 2010, something like that. So we were holding prayer in his house every Monday. But I was not just close to them like that. So, you know, God has a purpose of doing things. God has a way. He say, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. His ways are different. It is not the way we human beings see things. That's, that is not how God sees it. He sees God. He sees us in a different ways. You know. So, uh, so when, I, when I came, they just called them. My father did not even object. He said, let him come and stay with me. I didn't even want to say, are you sure? He said, yes, let him come and stay with me. It's a church we have almost 100 people, if not even more than, more than 100. They know me. I know them. We are from the same country, the same place, everything. Look, the God is not a God of partiality. He's not a God of segregation. It's not the God of tribe. When you talk of tribe, there is no tribe. There's, they might have, they have tribe, the Indian tribe, whatever tribe, Cherokee. Whatever. But if you go to Africa, in the land of the black, that is where you see tribe. The tribe in New Bedford is different from the tribe in Four River. The tribe in Four River is different from the tribe in Quincy. The Quincy tribe is different from another tribe. That is where you really see tribe. That you, if, before, before, if I'm from the tribe of New Bedford, I cannot marry a woman from Quincy. 
What's the next town to New Bedford? The next one. I cannot marry a woman from Fair Heaven. My parents want me to marry from New Bedford. That was, the, that, that was just the law. It's just the tribal law. Oh, the, the Quincy people, Fair Heaven people, they are no good. Why would you go and marry from that tribe? But thank God, <laughs> thank God, the blood of Jesus Christ destroyed those things. It's, it's, it's destroying that in Africa. It's, it's, it's really killed. I can go to Ghana. I can go to Sudan. I can go to Libya. I can go to South Africa to marry now. South Africa can, can go to Gambia. Before, you cannot tell me a South African man can marry a Nigerian woman or a Nigerian man can marry a Gambia or from Senegal or Congo. No. I'm talking of your own country, your own state, your own locality, even your own tribe. I cannot marry from my own tribe. I have to marry from my typical tribe. Yeah, my father said, just come. Don't worry, bring him. I just go and stay with them. I have a job there in New Bedford. The job was very good. If I see that job did not again, I'll be happy. It's a job you don't work. If you don't work, just go and sleep or go and stay or watch video or go and cook or you can go home at the end, come back. It's, it's, that is just the procedure. That's just the procedure of the job. If there's no job, just there's a bed. We have a room where you sleep. Just sleep. Or there's a car. If there's no, if there's no nothing doing, the way they have a, a big refrigerator where they store food for us, everything. In New Bedford, yeah, I miss the job. I really miss that job. You don't do the time of the job. The job is there. We work. If there is no job, especially summer, nothing doing, we drive all over. Myself, my supervisor, my lead, and the other, we just be driving all over. And ticket is free. You can go to anywhere. I was not using my ticket. I didn't even know who to put in my ticket. I was just, I thought it was, it was a blessing job. And so I was so happy. They put me home later. I found myself. Uh, I, got a, I got another place. I have to move to a place to rent before I finally left. Although before I left, my father had to warn me, but I never listened. You know, so I left, then something happened, then I came back again. What I'm trying to tell you, before in my life, I never have a father who tell me, I love you. I used to hate. I was a Christian. I go to church, I sing, I pray, but there is something in me. There is something in me because my father did not take care of me. So I used to hate people who have fathers. And I used to hate people who tell me they are father to children. Did you know why? Because my father never take care of me. He never cares about me. He has so many children. He never cares about anybody. So I was, I live, I was, I, I grown up in the street. I grown, I grew up with people. With, you know, living with people from here to there, from there to here, there, here, there, there. So I was abused. So with those things I went through in life, I hate my father with passion. I hate him. If, if, if not because it's my father, I would have killed him. I feel like killing him. I don't want to see anything like father. I don't want to hear people saying, this, uh, this is what my father bought for me. If I see it among other children, sometimes I would destroy those things. When I was growing up, I would destroy it because why would you come and tell me your father bought this? whereby I don't even have a father who said he bought me something. I will destroy those things. Or I will just, if I'm bigger than that child, or that kid, I'll beat him. They don't know why. I, I just hate. Till, till when I even come to America, I still hate. I was going to church, but there was a bond in me. There was a strong bond in me. I hate. I hate my father with passion. I hate children who say, this is my father. I hate to see people buying their children kids. I do I I used to do that. I used to though I was going to church, I was still going praying, fasting, everything. There are some certain things in our life we need to let go. The Bible says, being let go. Let those things go. If you cannot go find somebody, pray to God to take it away from your life. You can't be a Christian, still be dragging things along with you. Dragging sins or dragging. It's not only those that commit fornication, uh, killing, lying, hatred that going to hell. There are sometimes there are kind of things in our life we need to just let go, be let go. Let that thing go in your life. So when I came, 
I started staying with my dad 2010 to 2013. So whenever he comes to me, oh son, how are you doing? I say, I'm fine, dad. Sometimes he give me a hug. I was filled with that, that bond, that strong bond of hating my father. Because when my father died, I was the one that did a funeral. I did everything. When I say funeral, it's not the way we do it in America here. You feed the whole community for seven days. If the burial is going to be 14 days, you feed all of them for 14 days. Those who do know you, you do not know at all. Those with six children, with seven children, they will come to your house, they will stay there for till the burial is finished. For that, you'll be feeding them. So I was having that hatred of not going to my father's funeral. But people beg, I was very young, though I went. I did a funeral, I borrowed money, I did it. But the passion that this man did not take care of me. Now I'm coming here to do his funeral. Why am I spending money? Why am I doing this? Why, what is the reasons? What is the purpose of doing this? I just hate this man. Now he's dead. He didn't take care of me. Why, why would I come and be doing this for him? What is the purpose? Well, I did it. I left. See, when I came to America, I was still having that grudge. I was still having that hatred. I was still having that malice. I was still having that anger in me. See, when I came to my father's house, everything changed 2010 when I came to his house. When I say my father, it's my father. Because whenever I go, whenever I go to my job, if I bring his picture out, ah, this is your parent, yes. It's, it's, it's giving me more advantage in the presence of other people. So you have a white parent. I say, yes. They are my parents. They are my mom. They are my father. If I'm going to a job, or I, was, I just tell my spouse, anywhere I am, say, I want to go and see my parents. How many days are you spending? I say, two weeks. I say, but they are not, but you say you are from, I say, no, my parents, they are here. They are from America. They are white like you. That is the most thing I tell people. I say, they are white like you. It's not even, they are not black. They are white like you. I say, are you sure? So you talk to my supervisor, right? <laughs> You talk to my supervisor, right? Yeah. My, so after I, I saw your brains are white, I said, yes. Wow, that's good. You know, it's surprising. A white giving birth to a black. How come? I said, well, it's, it's just God. That's fine. They will give me, they will approve it. Even when I was in Duluth, when I was coming here, they still approve it. So, what I'm trying to say is that when I was not living with my father, so that, get, us, get up, dad. Uh, Daddy would tell me, just do what you are doing to me. Son, I love you. I love you. That I love you too, Dad. That bondage in me, I'll be seeing something like electric hitting me. Bing. That's something will hit me. Whenever he give me that hug, or my mother give me a hug, that's something will hit me. It will push me back. But they don't know what I was going through. I was having that. That spirit was in me. That devil was in me. That devil of having that strong bond to hate my own father. Despite what he did, I'm supposed to love him no matter what. He's my dad. But because of what he did, I just hate him. Anytime my father would get up, oh, son, I love you. I love you too, dad. That thing will hit me again. That thing keep on hitting me, hitting me. The way it was hitting me. One day he gave me a hug. Boy, I went to my room. I staggered. I just lay on the bed. I almost, I just... I feel like passing out. Something just, boo, you know. What I'm trying to say here, he delivered me. God used him to save me. Sometimes everything is not by prayer. There are different ways we get healed. There are different ways of miracle. There are different ways of deliverance. It's not the way I get saved. It's not the same way he or she gets saved. We are all saved in a different way. We get delivered in a different way. So when he gave me, you see, a hug, giving it to me every day, giving it to me every day, every morning, every afternoon, we go to eat. Oh, son, I love you. That thing was not going, was not going. That passion of hatred was going. That passion, that stone, that stone heart, I can't guess my father was broken. It was not light. Sometimes just say, thank God for him. God used him to deliver me from that a passion. Glory be to God. But today, I'm happy I got delivered. And again, I'm happy because I, I wish my 
father, WO2, is a warrant officer in Nigeria. I was a high ranking officer in the Nigeria, high which is our life. I would have said, Well, I'm sorry for hating you. you know, I don't hate you anymore, but I'm just sorry if I know what I know now. But God's thing delivered me. I love him now. I love him. I'm happy I got delivered. What I'm trying to say in every, any of our life, every Christian life, who knows the highest commandment? Love. Let's open to John 3 16. John 3 16. Okay, it's already there. Oh. John 3 16 says, For God, for means for purpose, for a reason, for a time, for something he wants to do. For, he just said, the Bible said, For. For, that for is for something God wants to do. God does not want us to perish. God does not want us to destroy. Say for, for, just for God. Look at that English there. For God, for what he's going to do for us. For God so loved the world. Look at, look at the verb that expresses the action, love. For God so loved the world. He loved the world. He doesn't want us to destroy. It is time for God to destroy the world. He destroyed with what? The first time was with water. With, with what? Sodom and Gomorrah. I was watching a documentary on a Discovery Channel. The scientists went to, according to scientists, they said it was because of the salt that God used to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. That is why the Dead Sea is like that. These scientists, they were doing a research on the Dead Sea. They found some of those particles, those things, people were living in Sodom, very close to the Dead Sea. Nothing in the Dead Sea. But scientists were saying because of God destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, the salt he used, I think they, according to scientists, they said they all float into the Dead Sea. That is why there is nothing, there is no life in Dead Sea. That is scientific on their own. I don't know how God made it. It might be true. But they said, that's what they said. It might be true. I was not there. I don't believe what, I don't see what I don't know. But it might be true. But they brought out some things from the Dead Sea. That, that is why the sea remained like that. That nothing can cleanse it, only God. And which is true. So he said, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. For he gave his only begetting son. That whosoever believeth on it shall not pay but have everlasting life. He loved the world. He gave his, his most valuable thing to the world to make a sacrifice. The Lamb of God. That is what you and I and the world is enjoying today. As I was telling my parents today, Pastor Pellet, Jesus on one side, Barabbas on the other side. Jesus stand for savior, stand for righteousness, stand for holiness. Barabbas, a murderer, a liar, a gossiper, a betrayer. That is what God was telling the world. Which one did you choose? Righteousness or unrighteousness? Holiness or unholiness? Love or hatred? The world said they choose the devil's side. Are you sure you choose the devil? They say we, oh, they choose the devil's side. We prefer to love the things of the world than to love the things of God. But we forgot in love. The Bible says love covered multitude of sin. When you love, you love God. When you love, you are doing the will of God. You are doing the commandment of God. That is the greatest commandment of God. But when you don't love, love does not bite. Love does not hate. Love does not kill. Love does not steal. Love does not gossip. Love is joyful. Love is happiness. Love is holiness. Love is cleanliness. But whereby you don't love, say, for God so loved the world. He loved the world. 
That is the gift we are enjoying, which is called Christmas today. Christmas is a gift God gave to us. We are celebrating the birth of Christ. But most of us think, the world thinks it's a time to buy things, do shopping, do buy and send it to people, drink, smoke, cook. It's, it's good to, to cook. It's good to, but some, you look at it the other way. It is the time God gave us the most precious gift in our life. If you love, you are a giver. If you love, you like others, you love others. But in a place whereby you don't love, if you don't love, then you are not serving God. That you remember the passage, it says, if you cannot love a brother who you see, how much then can you love God, whom you don't see? I'm happy for you people to be here today. You love God. You fear God. He said the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. You fear him. You reverence him. That's why you said, let me come to church. Despite the cold, you still make a way to come here. God will bless you in Jesus' name. You make a way. You take your time to be here. If my dad is to go to internet or radio today, this morning, around night time, make an announcement. If you come to my church today, I'm going to give you hundred, hundred dollar. We open by seven. Trust me, people will be here by five waiting. Trust me, people will be here, maybe twelve to be at the first to be at the door. But there is something greater than that hundred dollar. Something greater, bigger. That will save your life. That will redeem your life. That will resurrect your life from where you are. But we don't want to get that. Something you will enjoy for the rest of your life. Something you will say God will give you is a blessing. A church is not a, a, church is not a place you come to just jump up, sing, and go home. No. It's a place you refuel your, your energy. When you fall back. You will fear just as you put gas in your car. If your gas is if your gas is going down, maybe half tank going to quarter tank. Although quarter tank here can still carry you, but if your tank is in quarter tank in Duluth, trust me, your car is going to froze up. Don't do that mistake. Always feed your car. If you are in Duluth, your car should be not less than half a tank. Anything half a tank, you are is gone. It's a place whereby God brings you here. To love. A church is a place whereby you regain your strength. Spiritual uh, strength. You regain that strength in you. You fill yourself up again. God, renew me. Revive me. Restore me. Remold me. Recreate me. It's a place where you gain that strength from. Maybe the preaching you hear last week Sunday, you're not going to hear it again. That's why I said from the beginning, tomorrow is not the promise to anybody. It's nobody knows when Jesus is coming. Nobody. I was watching something on a, a, a YouTube and Facebook the other day. A circle was around Israel. Trumpets were blowing from the sky. Trumpets were blowing. A circle. Maybe you go and check it from Facebook. Or Everybody was just scared. People were just scared. People were just shouting. A trumpet was blowing. There was most a circle of cloud in the sky in Israel. But trumpet were just blowing. Boom! They don't know where the trumpet was blowing from. Those are warnings. I may say we are just living by his grace now. It is the grace of God with the blood he shed in the cross of Calvary. We are still living. Because if you look at the sin the world is committing now, if you look at the sin we've committed, it's more than Sodom and Gomorrah. It's more than that of Noah, the people of Noah who perish. The world now is a sinful place. Some places I went to in uh, St. Louis to have a fellowship, every church has a police car everywhere. They have to call the cops every Sunday, every Bible study, just to guide the church. If not, something is going to happen. Killings. All the streets, 
they just put a sandboard. It's time we stop killing. It's time we stop killing. It's the, all the whole street. Those neighborhood. So for that love God has given to us, please, I'm begging you. We need to still share that love. God did not save you to say you are saved. Yes, it's good to be saved. God saved you. God gave you that love. God saved you so that you also can save others. God saved my dad here so that he can save me from the bondage I was. From that heart stone, hatred, I was serving against my dad. Stone heart, I was serving against people with parents. Stone heart against people who call themselves father. God did not just save him. He's going to, he got saved him so that he can save other people. It's a, it's a rep. There's something that I, um, in my profession we call rep. They, if working for a company, there's somebody that represents the company that we are working for. That rep is going to say, okay, do this, don't do this. Do that, don't do that. Do you, do you want this in your airplane or you don't want this in your airplane? How do you want this airplane to go? He is going to, he's, just, he's just representing the company. He represents God to save me. So that I get saved, fully saved. I was saved, I was, but I was not saved in the sense of, I was still carrying unforgiveness in my heart. I couldn't forgive my dad. See, 2010 to 13, that thing dies off. Just with a hug. Are you doing? I, I is everything. The hog was the one really hitting me bad. It was dying down, dying down, dying down. And beloved brothers and sisters, I'm not preaching today. There's a day time I will come. You all have to keep me in prayer because I like to be here to help my own parents. He can't do it alone. I, but I'm thanking every one of you here with still a pin, assisting him. If I'm in Connecticut now or I'm in Maybe New York. I can drive down here on Sunday. Go back. Maybe if I'm not working on Wednesday, I can come here, spend time. The next day, I go back. Time spent for God is not wasted. Please, my beloved brothers and sisters, we need to love. The Bible says love covers multitude of sin. Love is patience. Love is joy. Love is long-suffering. Love is peace. Love is happiness. Let's have that love. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When you love, you are a giver. When you love, when you give, God gave happily to the world. I love the world. Let me give him, let me give them what I love so precious. God was happy when he gave Jesus to the world. He was not grumbling was not murmuring, was not shivering. He was, he was happy. That's why I gave Christ to the world. Whenever God sees the blood in the cross of Calvary, this is the promise I made. This is the blood my son shed. Uh, no, I won't destroy the world. Let me still give them repentance. Let me give them time for repentance. Let me give them time for repentance. Don't tell me if God wants to destroy the world today, he will do it. A seconds, he will do it. Code, look at what is happening now. Code is just how many degree? 20 degree today? Or maybe less than. If God wants to destroy, can use code. If you are just going, if he's just going to destroy the world, if he if the code goes below 20, if it goes up to 30 in Africa, I'm telling you, they will call the UN. <laughs> because our highest <laughs> code there is 70 degree. Yeah, you see people putting on jackets, 70 degrees, sh shivering. Say, oh, it's cold, it's cold. Anything below 70, there is trouble in Africa. I'm telling you honestly. Anything below 70, if it goes below 60, <laughs> I think they will call the UN. Something's not right. <laughs> Something's not right, though. We need your help. We need our system. We need to start building here all over the places. It's 70 degrees. Our... The highest code, since I was born, the highest code, it doesn't go below 70. Even if, even if that 70 degrees is still warm, you see sunshine. But to we, is the highest code. But here people live, imagine I'm, I was living in a place minus 55 degree in Duluth. 
minus 55 degree in Duluth. I asked my, what am I doing here, God? Minus 55 degree. My friend called me yesterday from Duluth. They were having minus 27. He said, Sam, how are you doing? We were talking. He said, my, I forgot to roll my car in two hours' time. It's frozen. Imagine where a car is frozen. My car froze three times in Duluth. I forgot. I made a mistake not to run it for two hours. I'll be an hour. Because you have, if you are not going to work tonight, you have to wake up 10 o'clock, run your car, 11 o'clock, run your car, 12 o'clock, run your car. Every, all night, you have to run your If not, the car is going. I promise you that the car is going. No matter how, even whether new Toyota, new Honda, it is going to froze. If God is to destroy the world with cold, you know there are certain cold that even the, the heat cannot even take anymore. One day I was, let me tell you a quick something. I, we were coming from work in the night. It was below 20, 28, 29. So the house was so chilly. I want to use the bathroom. I run. Let me use the bathroom. As I open the bathroom, I flush. Boom. Hit. Boom. I open it. There was block inside the, 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 the water plate. It was block. And I need to poop. I need to pee. Hey. I, <laughs> I run. Take my key. Ah, this time, this, I have to run for that. Kiri, kiri. Boy, I run to the gas station. I said, how are you doing? He said, fine. I said, where's your, where's, your, where's your bathroom? He said, just go right. Go right. I said, okay, okay, okay. Right or left? He said, right. Before I could walk to the bathroom, it was, I thought our bathroom was okay. Not knowing the bathroom was flush. It was cold. It was blocked. Yeah, frozen. It was frozen. It couldn't, nothing. I know what I'm telling I, I, for real. I Sometimes I have to leave my house. Go and you before the lady now fix the bathroom, connect the wire to the bathroom. Say I'm sorry. I say okay, okay. You know, every of us we are now using bathroom at our job outside. If God said, let me just destroy this earth with cold, He would He will do it with fire. He will do it. He is God. He can do whatever He like. He created it. He said, the Bible says, only the fool says there is no God. Only the fool, the stupid one, the idiot, says there is no God. There is God. There is heaven. There is hair fire. The Bible says, after judgment, after death, comes what? Judgment. Please, we have to love. Love covers multitude of sin. Look at the love my parents gave to me now. He saved me. I'm, I feel so happy. I want to come back. So I just want to see them. Say, these are my parents. I'm proud. I have a parents. Not like before. I wasn't. I don't feel moody. I don't feel sad. I feel depressed. That thing was affecting my life. Physically, psychologically, emotionally. I, was, I didn't grow up with my parents. If you go and ask my father, he doesn't know my date of birth. I never know anything like celebrating birthday. Say birthday. It's, it's, it's strange to me to see people celebrating birthday. What, what for? I, my parents never do that to me. Because I was not loved by them. I'm begging you all. You all should keep me, just keep me prayer. I'm, if I'm telling you application I've submitted to Connecticut, I'm, I don't just want to Bedford, to, even to Maine. I've done everything. But I know one day it will open. The door will open. I'll be here. It may not be here. Let me come and join you people. I mean, coming here alone is something. You know, I've been to churches, but I see so many churches. The, the way Christianity is going these days is just falling aside. People are backsliding. Even the church. Everybody now is now prosperity, 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 prosperity. That's what they preach now in the church. Church is not, it's, it's not about money. The church of God is about salvation. It's about being saved. It's about being holy. It's about knowing God, loving God, loving your neighbor. 
If you don't love God, if you don't have the fear of God, you won't be here today. You can, you can stay at your home. Let me just stay. Nobody will force you. God will not force you to say, go to church, you must go to church, you must go, you must go to... No, he won't force you. He won't. Any day you go to church or you go to service or you in the minister or something, there is a blessing in it. There is a blessing. If you come here, there is a blessing. There is, a, no, there is no doubt about it. There is one um, a brother that used to be in this occultic world. Really, it was dying with devil, with demons. He himself became a demon. But God arrested him. He said because what they did in the demonic world, they make people not to come to church so that the gift they God have for them in the gate. He said as soon as you are entering the church, the gift will follow you. He said, but they don't have the eyes to see it. He said, but there's a, in, a, in a church, in a real righteous church, he said the people born, the real born again, he said you see fire on their head. This man, is, 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 his mother died. When, he mother, when his mother died, his mother, his mother belongs to one of those secret courts. Every night, the demons, his mother, they would come and be breastfeeding him when he was a baby. So he was from a baby. They trained him. He went to school in the demonic world. When he speaks English, a professor cannot stand him. But he didn't go to university. But he knows everything. He was in demonic world. He said that's why they, 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 they destroyed people from not going to church. They just make them weak. So that that gift, when they go, they will go and pack those gifts. Imagine the gift demons are taking. It takes the grace of God for you to take it back again. Don't say I'm not good. No, no matter what it is, that's just me. No, ma no matter how tired, no matter how weak, I will still go to church. Let me just go to hear the word of God. I'm doing it for myself. I'm not doing it for Paul. I'm not doing it for Gabriel. I'm not doing it for Thomas. For my own good self. Because I love God. I wobbled. Sometimes I do wobble. I wobble. No, I'm not saying I don't sin. I sin. There's no perfection in any human being apart from Christ God. Christ is the Lord. I was, I was walking with my Indian friend the other day. He came to meet me. His name is Ka. Sam, what are you doing? I said, fine. Uh, Sam, you know, I'm just thinking something now. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Yesterday, I was just thinking, you know, I'm Hindu. I said, yes, you are Hindu. Uh, Sam, I just thinking, you see, I like the way they talk about Jesus. I said, what? I like the way they talk about Jesus. You know, the, 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 the Bible, he said, uh, Jesus Christ is the only son of God. I know any other person like that. I said, yes, it's true, Carl, it's true. And uh, Jesus Christ, you see, is the only one that dead that rose from the grave. I said, yes, Carl, it's true. Uh, Jesus Christ was the one born by the a virgin. He's... Then the man never sleep with the woman when he was born. I said, yes, Carl, it's true. He said, well, I, I feel like, I want to feel like serving that Jesus. I like him. He's a good man. I said, yes, Carl, he's a good man. You know how Indian talk. He said, Sam, what do I do? I said, just find a church, start going. He said, but I discovered with my wife. My wife said, it's good, we should be going to church. I said, I like it. I want to know Jesus. I really like Jesus. Probably the Spirit of God just touched him. He came to meet me. In my place of joy, they will say, oh, they just know three of us. Myself, Gary, and uh, Brother Juan. Juan works in another hangar. But we, my, my brother, every Wednesday we have a Bible study. So whenever it comes to something, they will say, those are the righteous ones. They call us righteous ones. Oh, they don't, they don't parry, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they just don't even disturb, they don't, even, they don't, they don't carry women, they don't, they don't have any time for women. Like that. They just... There's something they will say. They will say, just go and meet them. They will tell you. So maybe the Spirit of God just touched Carl. He just came to meet me. I said, yes, God. Just say, Sam, I will, I, will, I will see what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to my wife. My wife, my wife will discuss. We, <laughs> we, we will want to know that Jesus will like him. He's a good man. And uh, know any other person that would die that raised from the grave? I said, yes, it's true. No man. No born. My friend, Torrance, that's how he got converted. A very strong Muslim man. Very strong. Very strong. Torrance was a very strong Muslim guy. He's a black American. He said all this. He said the man who was their, their teacher. He, is, he has a PhD in Islamic. He said one day, he said, there is no man on earth. Nobody has dared 
died and raised up from the grave. Only Jesus. And only Jesus is the only person coming to judge the world. He said, what? Then I said, Sam, this man is an Islamic man. He has, a, he has a PhD in Islamic. He has a high degree in Islam. And he says, strong Islam. He's telling me this. He said he went home that day. He said that was the day he just fought his Quran, fought all Islamic, fought everything in Islam. He said that was the day. He just threw everything in the garbage. He said that was the day he get converted. He said if Jesus is the only man that is coming to judge the world, and he's the only one that arose from the grave. So I'll be following the wrong religion. And this man, this man teaching me, he knows all these things. And he's telling me the truth. He went home, he sat down, he packed his Quran, packed everything. It is Tesbi, that thing they used to test me. He packed all, everything. All the paper, all the paperwork about Islam. That's how Torrance got converted. He said, Sam, I throw that thing at the garbage. He said he went to the church the next day. He said, God, take me. Arrest me. I surrendered everything to thy bones. He said, that is how Torrance got converted. He said, he first went to, started going to Baptist. After Baptist, later he now get, um, when he's, as he's going, he now go deeper, then he become a Pentecostal fellowship. There is, there is no any other name that can save you on earth, on heaven, on earth. It's every name shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. There is nobody greater than Christ. He gave us that love. We need to share the love. We need to share that love among brothers, among sisters. He said, we are the salt of the world. Let people feel our taste. Let us mind how we behave. Let us mind how we talk. The apostles were first called Christian. In where? That? Antioch? Antioch. Did you know why? Because they behave like Jesus. They call them Christ-like. They said, these are Christ-like in Antioch. That's how we got the name Christian. Christ-like. That is the meaning of Christian. Christianity. These are Christian. These are Christ. These are followers of Christ. These are just Christ. When they, when they call the apostles Christ, they said, these are Christ-like. Because the way he, he behaved, the way he talked, everything about Christ was in them. In Antioch. That's how they started calling them Christ-like. Let us share that love. I come to preach, but I just tell you what love is about. Let's share that love. Let's love God, love our brothers, love our sister. If my father didn't love me, my mother didn't love me, I won't stay with them. They didn't say come. If they are not givers, God is a giver. We have to also be a giver. Do you know before I left now, do you know what they call me? Oviebo. Ebo. Like if I my father and I we call uh, white people, hey bo no hey bo. They call me Obiebo when I was in Nigeria. Why? Because I was giving. Anybody that comes to me, I, I give. Some call me they they just obiebo, 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 obiebo. They think I'm Obiebo. They call me Obiebo. A white son. When I was in Nigeria before I even left. It's a son of the white. Because they believe only the white people give. That's the black man mentality. I'm telling the truth in Africa. That's our mentality. Only the white people, we able, able give. You go and meet a white, we give you. But a black man, you go and tell him, I don't give. I don't have. So I was nicknamed Oyebo. Oyebo's son. A white man's son. Thank God I've seen a white man's son. I'm a Jesus Christ white man's son. And I still have a white father's son here. Glory be to God. Let's love. When you love, you, you are a giver. When you love, you feel happy. When you love, you are joyful. When you love, you never lack. When you love, you always succeed. When you love, you prosper. When you love, wherever you lay your hands, you, there is a breakthrough in your life. When you love, there is no burden. 
when you love as Jesus love, love me, as Jesus love you, you will love other people. You cannot be a Christian and tell me you don't know how to love. You don't know what is called love. Something is wrong with your Christianity. There is something wrong in your Christianity. If you are a Christian and you don't love, no way. There is no way. There is no way for you. Although some of us are just lip, lip Christian, but in the heart, it's not there. When I was in Salem, there was a brother who was going to a, who was having a job in New Hampshire. I was he in New Hampshire? I start my work by six. He start by, by around six o'clock. I be seven six thirty, but I have to drive from Providence to go and drop him off. In the whole church, nobody could do that. I give. A giver never lack. When you give, you are sowing a seed in your life. God gave. Look at the English. For God so loved the world. He gave. He loved and he gave. He didn't say, let me leave the world. He said, give her. We have to love. We have to give. Do as much as you can. If you have $10 in your pocket, if somebody asks you $2, give him. Okay, I see I have 10. I'll give you $2 from this. I have 8 left. Don't be that, that, that style. Oh, I don't have at all. Do you know why most of us never prosper? Because we confess negativity from our mouth. I don't have. I don't have. That is why they never have. They never move from A to B, from B to C. Because they confess from their mouth. You see, this tongue it can bless. This tongue, it can cause. It can cause a disaster. Just this little tongue. Go and read, go and read the book of James about tongue. See what it says about tongue. James chapter 3. See what the deadliest points is so far in our body. is the tongue. It's a blessing. Also, it's for a cause. It is good we used to bless our life by loving. Love cares. Let us care. We are Christian. Jesus cares for us. He look after us. Did you know if we're to, the air we breathe, if we are to be paying for it, some of us will not exist. It's just like you are paying your light bill. If you don't pay your light bill, you shut it off. You won't have light. The same way, but God has already given us that breath of life, that love. Keep on breathing. Keep on breathing. 24 seconds. You pay nothing for it. You wake up in the morning, you go to your bathroom, you take shower, you go back to your work. Somebody is responsible taking care of you. And that is God. He's working on you 24 seconds, 366 days a year or 365 days in a year. Can't you thank him? Can't you just kneel down to say, thank you, God? Why can't you just spend, out of 24 hours, why can't you just spend one hour say, thank you, God? For loving me. You don't need to pray a repetition a prayer. There's something called repetition prayer. Prayer becomes a sin in our life. God, I just thank you. The only thing God needs in our life is just to thank you. Just glorify him. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I praise your name. I worship your name. You, you just, just have that art in your life. That ACT, you adore, you confess. What's the nonsense one about that? ACT. You adore, you confess, city, thanksgiving, then the last one is supplication, which is art. Just do it. God, I magnify your name, I worship, I adore you. I book my ticket November. Here comes a week to, just a few days to, I fall out sick. Tomorrow is not a promise to anybody. Please, brothers and sisters, we have to have Jesus as our insurance. We have to have Christ as our insurance. It's the highest insurance God has given to us. I might sleep this night. I might not wake up the next day. I'm gone.
After death comes judgment. We have to take Christ as our insurance. It's our insurance. Nobody knows what is going to happen. Nobody. Watching TV today, see, car accident. They never leave their home. They were going to have car accident. Some died. They said two died at the spot. The other one injured. Thing. Something, anything can happen any day. Any time. The body is a machine. Anything can change in our body. Instantly like that. Anything. We, we don't see our organs in our body. We don't see inside our body. We don't know how it works. Only God knows how everything works in our life. He sees us. He knows us. Let me quickly share this. Tom Brady, your, your brother, brother, Tom Brady, when he finished his college, he went all around. I was watching the documentary they were showing on the NFL about his life history. He went all, no, no, None of the team could take him. No team. But he came, he came to Patri uh, Patriot, New England Patriot. The coach was able to cite him that this guy, he has his skill. He has, he has the experience. He has, but he was so skinny. Tom Brady was so skinny that when you look at him, you don't think this guy is good for quarterback. The same way God, the, only the coach could figure him out. Even some of the people on um, New England, what are you going to do with this? They were even quarreling with the coach. He said, I know what you can do. The same way God sees us. We don't know ourselves. Only God knows us. We don't know ourselves. Only God knows us. He knows us. He knows in our inner out. What we do, what I do, my father cannot see me. He doesn't know what I'm doing. Maybe in the, God sees me. He sees everything in my life. He knows me from A to Z. He knows I was coming to have a parents like this, like them, that I'll be proud of in my life. He knows. There is power mountain in the blood, in the blood. There is power mountain in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mountain in the blood, in the blood. There is power mountain in the blood, in the blood. There is power mountain. In the blood of Jesus Christ, there is power mountain. In the blood, in his blood, there is power mountain. In the blood, in the blood, there is power mountain. In the blood of Jesus Christ, there is power mountain. In his blood, there is power mountain in the blood of Jesus. There is power. Even the devil fears him. There is power. And beloved brothers and sisters, love, love covers multitude of sins. May God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, two disclaimers. One, the, the doors will not be open at 5 a.m. and I'm not giving out $100. Okay. So that's clear. Uh, but it's true in Nigeria, at 70 degrees, they're wearing coats like you have on, the, the air, aviation hats with the fur and, and, the, and over there on the motorcycles they're driving. I'm on short sleeve shirts. I was just there in October. I'm in short sleeve shirts, and they're all looking at me like, you know, why aren't you freezing? I was like, this is great, you know. Uh, but um, thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing. Son, we love you. Uh, God bless you. Uh, let's all stand. We just close in prayer if you can. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and I just pray that everyone be home safely, Lord, and that you'll guide us and lead us. Till we meet again on Sunday morning, Father, we look forward to what you're going to do. Father, we thank you once again for your word, and help us, Lord, to love with your love, and help us to um, be able to let things go and not to hold on to things. And we thank you and we praise you for this word tonight, in Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you.